Our next um, iSpot competition winner uh, is Dr. Jeff Belcora, accompanied by Alexandra Tang. When, when, when we listened to Professor Christensen talk about uh, disruptive innovation, one of the one of the um, uh, one of the, the collection of criteria that, in a nutshell, sort of summarized what would allow a, a facilitating, uh, or, a, or rather, an enabling technology to make an innovation disruptive would be that it had to be simple, at least good enough, and cheaper than whatever else was around, and more accessible than whatever else was around. And in a, in a way, these disruptive innovations compete with non-consumption. That there isn't really a market to begin with, or that people aren't really thinking about that because whatever that is, it's not quite good enough, or it's not quite advanced enough. Think about that in terms of a model where somebody who's not even involved in healthcare education uh, in this country, but wants to be, starts to get, um, a, starts to become a part of healthcare and in the process competes with non-consumption and helps communication in healthcare be better. I'll leave it at that and let Dr. Belcora and Ms. Tang fill in the details. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Jeff Belcora and Alexandra Tang from the University of California, San Francisco. Thanks, Dan. Thanks. Thank, you. Thank you very much to the organizers for inviting us and being such incredible hosts. And uh, we're going to talk about decision support in a particular domain, in the domain of breast cancer, and with a particular delivery model which involves pre-medical interns. So I do want to invite you, though, to think more broadly about your context and how what we're doing might relate there and, and how we, we might learn from it. And, and come find us afterwards and talk. So using breast cancer as an example, many of you know that almost 200,000 women are diagnosed with breast cancer every year. And they face very difficult decisions. And the decisions are difficult because although a lot of progress has been made and cancer is no longer a death sentence, the treatments are still very invasive, sometimes referred to as slash, burn, and poison for surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. So the treatments are invasive, and the, the outcomes are still uncertain. And one of your challenges, if you're diagnosed with breast cancer, but this also applies to other medical conditions, is how are you going to get the care that fits your personal priorities, your goals, your life, your work. And this is actually quite difficult. And one of the reasons it's difficult is that doctors are really specially trained to take care of the disease, not really the whole patient. And patients, when they're newly diagnosed, are often in a state of shock. And it's sometimes difficult for them to be as informed and involved as perhaps they might want to be. So. I want to tell you a quick story just to illustrate this dynamic, and that is uh, Mary, who is diagnosed with breast cancer and comes to see her doctor, and the doctor looks at the tumor and says, aha, this is, we can look at your stage, your size, the um, HER2 status of this tumor, the hormone receptor status, the margins, the node involvement, and, you know, there's a number of options here, and at the end of the day, and a lot of this information is going in one ear and out the other because, of course, Mary's in a state of shock. And so at the end of the day, she really defers to the doctor. And what the doctor recommends at the end of the day is combination therapy, surgery followed by radiation. And it's only after Mary has had the surgery, and really the train has left the station, that she really appreciates what's involved in the radiation therapy part of this, and that it's daily trips to a radiation center every day, five days a week, for six weeks. And the problem is that Mary lives four hours drive from the nearest radi radiation center, and she works on her family farm, and it's harvest time. So you can see that really the treatment recommended may have been right for the tumor, but it wasn't really the appropriate treatment. There were better options for the whole patient. So what we need in healthcare, one of the things we need, is doctors who take care of the whole patient, not just the disease. And we need patients who are infor informed and involved in making sure they get the care for their whole life and not just for the tumor in their life. So the issue about getting informed and involved is that we actually know how to do that. 
there's been uh, the Cochrane Collaboration has issued systematic reviews of randomized controlled trials of interventions like decision aids. Decision aids are interactive, multimedia type educational presentations that are very engaging and make it relatively easy for patients to understand through illustrations and other things uh, what's, what their condition is and what the options are. And they're available and they're proven to work to increase patient knowledge. And we can also coach patients to write down their questions so that when they freeze up in the appointment, they can still get their questions across to the doctor who can understand what their priorities and questions and concerns are. And we can give patients an audio recording and good summary, plain language summary, of everything the doctor said so that the patient can review that in the comfort of their home and in the company of loved ones, uh, even if things have gone in one ear and out the other the first time around. So we know these things work, and the question is, how do we deliver this kind of decision support? And how do we end up with doctors who take care of the whole patient and not just the disease? So we've addressed this puzzle. One of the places we've addressed and one of the conditions we've addressed it is at the UCSF Breast Care Center where I work. And we have started a pre-medical program. And every year we hire 10 college graduates who want to gain experience and frankly also get into the best medical school that they can get into and, and sort of trumpet that experience. Uh, and, and so we've put them to work in the medical center doing jobs related to research and other kinds of projects. And we've convinced their bosses to lend them to me for a day a week so that they can deliver the kind of decision support that I was just describing. And so one of these pre-meds is here to tell you more about our program, Alexandra. Hi, as Jeff mentioned, my name is Alexandra and I am one of the pre-meds. There are 10 of us total and among the 10 of us, we divide our coverage of the clinic. So I cover Monday mornings and what that means that I call all newly diagnosed breast cancer patients that are coming in for Monday morning appointments. So for example, let me tell you about the last patient I worked with named Anna. My first job was to figure out if we had any educational materials that might be helpful to her. Uh, we have a series of five educational DVDs and booklets, and they're developed by the Foundation for Informed Medical Decision Making, and range in topic anywhere from precancer to metastatic disease. So part of my job is to send the right materials to the right patient at the right time. So I sent the materials to Anna, and after she had a chance to review them, over the phone, I helped her develop a list of her questions and concerns for her doctor. I then or organized them into a list and emailed them to the doctor so he'd have a chance to look them over before her appointment. Then the day of her appointment, I went with Anna and on a laptop I took notes while audio recording on a little recorder like this. Um, and at the end of the appointment, I was able to give her a copy of a summary of my notes as well as an audio recording on a CD which she was able to listen to when she went home with her family. At the end of all these exchanges, Anna sent me an email and I wanted to share an excerpt of it with you guys. Uh, she wrote, I cannot imagine having my questions, fears, and concerns being addressed if it wasn't for you. You're going to be a wonderful, caring doctor in the future. Hearing something like this and working with, pa with patients like Anna has really been so encouraging, especially as I apply to medical school. Coming into the program, I knew I enjoyed my science classes, and I knew that I wanted to do something to help people, but I don't think I really understood what patients go through and how much a doctor can influence that. Now that I've had the chance to be fully immersed in patient questions and concerns, I know how I can help patients find treatment that will fit their whole life. I know not only that I want to be a doctor, but I know exactly how I want to be a doctor. So you have at your tables, and we can certainly make available to you otherwise if you can't find them, uh, handouts that show an example on the centerfold of the type of question list that Alexander produces with her pre-med colleagues for, for our patients, and then also a short summary that just gives the gist of what was discussed. We use a, a special format that's kind of an updated version of the SOAP note. We call it the scoped note. We've also provided you with some uh, evidence about from our evaluations and uh, some links to other references, a, a general description on the front, our brochure is in the packet, and for the first 50 people who come talk to us afterwards, we have a 
CD with a radio interview featuring one of our patients that you may find uh, interesting. And so we just want to uh, invite you all to uh, review these materials and come talk to us. And you know, there's a lot of lessons to learn and share here. One of them is that we're wondering if there's anyone in the room who would be interested in expanding this kind of program. We have a vision for a pre-medical core, like the Peace Corps or Teach for America, where young people would spend a year or two delivering decision support and perhaps working on other projects and, and gaining this kind of experience while delivering a service. So uh, if any of you are interested in bringing the pre-medical core or any other type of decision support to a hospital or clinic near you, please come talk to us. And together we can help shape doctors who take care of the whole patient and not just the disease. Thank you.